Hello and welcome back everyone to a new episode of Lawmaster Leveling. Here with me, Sneaky Bard, on our goblin rogue, Tafrona the Explorer, as the title here says. So, in the last episode, we started our journey through the Desolus. Not Desolus, Feralus. We came from the Desolus, we're no longer in the de uh, in Desolus. As you can see, it's way too green to be uh, in the Desolus. We did get some nice bracers, so let's upgrade those. We also killed a ton of harpies and just chatted about real life and about how harpies are the most one dimensional enemy in World of Warcraft, probably beyond kobolds, even though kobolds are getting their own expansion in Hearthstone, so you should check that out. I'm really excited, not only because of all the new cards, which are fun, but just because of all the new fun stuff that they managed to conjure up out of WoW or Warcraft lore. For the uh, for the expansions, because let's face it, WoW is the premium way for the to the Warcraft lore. But you can learn a lot about the more quirky parts of the uh, Warcraft lore through playing Hearthstone. So if Warcraft is something that you really really like and you want to know all about it, then do play some Hearthstone as well. I know I will at least during uh, Christmas break. Although I will also have to play some Civ. To prepare for the the expansion we have to go and kill noxious whelps now though so this actually gives us a bit more meaty lore to talk about so let's see um why we need to kill these noxious whelps we found a brood of dragon whelps gathered off the road to the north and they show the same illness as the stags green dragons are not simple beasts of nature but the very guardians of the wild they are magical creatures, and to see them ill as well implies this is a dangerous threat. We must stop this from spreading further through any means. Slay the infected whelp Staffrona and return to me. Ooh. This is, as implied by the wording, quite an extreme measure indeed, because if you do remember when we talked about dragon aspects way, way back when we started this, um, the green dragon aspect ruled by Ysera, who very very tragically died in Legion um, is the or was the aspect of the Emerald Dream and thus of um, at least a part of Azeroth's uncorrupted nature oh dear we have echo spawns here let's kill them and through that she and her offspring are very very powerful um, beings indeed and quasi immortal which comes with the drawback that they don't uh, procreate that much. So the whelps are indeed very, very precious to them, and to kill them off is quite a grave thing to do because it robs much more than just one future generation of uh, dragons, but um, potentially far more than that. Here we also see a new type of dragon uh, unit. So we've got here Lethlas, the Keeper of the Gateway to the Emerald Dream. We'll talk about that a bit more later. And we see these Jade Mir Echo Spawn, which are classified, I think, as Dragon Kin here. So it's, well, Lethlas is classified as Dragon Kin as well. But the reason it just doesn't say Dragon, but Dragon Kin, is, is that these Jade Mar, or these, I think they're called Guardians in general um, are offspring of dragons in humanoid form having away. intermated with um, mortal races or mortal races because they've become champions of the we are on the wrong island here of the as particular flight in the case of the Jade Mir Echo Spawn the green dragon flight have been granted dragonite powers which has twisted their forms into into this form so that's a really tasty piece of lore there that I actually didn't know before I started role playing a couple of years ago and we had a very dragon focused campaign going on here but let's kill these noxious whelps and I did also mention that Ysera is the ruler of the emerald dream 
which is um, how Azeroth, our planet, looked before any type of life. Um, I think it means like life in general, but mostly like um, oof, uh, humanoid life that like changes nature in any any way. It's basically the planet in its pristine form. Uh, so that's the uh, Emerald Dream, Azeroth in its pristine form. She rules over it, and these portals lead to it. So there are connections like these to the Emerald Dream in in the in the world what's less clear though is why they are surrounded by night elven architecture i mean one idea is that the druids because they revere the emerald dream that's where they go to sleep uh built these to mark the portals uh, um where they uh, to mark the portals basically in the real world one could be that the dragons themselves built it or just some other dragon based cult i mean the druids are quite interlinked with the green dragon flight but the black one for instance has had its uh, henchmen as well uh but it's interesting to see how all the portals wherever they are in the world actually have <clears throat> distinctly night elven uh, signs to it i mean the one in uh, Darkshore, for instance, which is all the way on the opposite side of the world, even looks distinctly Night Elven. And I don't think that that's actually an oversight by the developers or was ever meant as an oversight. It's just not something that is really gone in, uh, gotten into or, yeah, explored in much detail by them. But it's at least something where in my role-playing campaign uh, a couple of years ago we did did have some tie-ins there where we speculated on how this might be and what we basically speculated with was some some kind of dragon cult with uh mortals and stuff like that obviously all non uh non-canon but uh based on like tidbits of lore that you could find here and there we've killed our noxious whelps though so let's go and turn that in i didn't even pay attention to if we had killed more than 10 but hey i just noticed the quest was done anyway so these guys are ill as is so we it doesn't matter if we kill more of them let's put it that way it only matters if we kill less of them can i find my way back to camp there's an owl a veil owl. Alright, here we go. But uh, yeah. So, why are there here, for instance, we have the ruins of Ravenwind, also Night Elven ruins. Why are there Night Elven ruins here? This is quite far from the Night Elven lands, and this is actually uh, an interesting story when you get into it that ties really nicely with the lore of the dungeon. Dire Maul or Eldrethalas as it's called by the uh, elves and it's linked to Queen Ajara having sent her most uh, devoted mages on an expedition to form other settlements in this case mostly Eldrethalas in the Night Elven lands and then later on after the shattering Lots of these were obviously abandoned, with the exception of Elder Thales, but they were known to exist to other night elves, so that's why we have here on Feather Moon Island a uh, inhabited night elven uh, settlement as well. And what's the story apart from, like, why did um, Queen Ajara want this, this city of Elder Thales being uh, constructed, apart from, you know, expansion because hey what queen would she be if she didn't increase her domain after all um and that's where the law gets quite interesting and and tragic to say the least but mostly interesting in my opinion so the chandrala which were the mage uh, her most loyal mages that she sent here they had the task of guarding all the knowledge 
that she thought was too dangerous to just be lying about for any of her the highborn to read and she also gave the Chandrala various um, tasks to, to complete basically because they were the most loyal of the loyal uh, that was one of the tasks for instance to secure this this knowledge without anyone else knowing about it but then when the war of the ancients happened and we need to kill these corrupted cliff giants as well um, Elder Flowers was pretty much cut off from the rest of the invasion and they didn't know uh, how dire the invasion was they actually also linked to the um, uh, some stuff that happens in the dungeon that we will get to uh, so they thought they were much much more local and when the sundering happened they weren't even part of the new reconstructed like pact with the other night elves that the night elves made with the green dragonfly uh, or the dragonflies in general and the creation of the world tree so they are not immortal like other night elves do to the world tree but obviously since they were magi they were very dependent on the well of eternity which was the fountain of all magic that the night elves used and when that got chucked uh, to the bottom of the ocean that they obviously felt and suddenly it was uh, like this font of power that they have gone accustomed and in some ways even addicted to was gone and their leader uh, Prince wait here I can actually open up the dungeon journal so let's do that dungeons dire mall where are you don't tell me that we don't there Prince Farondes I think his name was Prince Farondes let's use this yeah no Prince uh, not Farondes sorry that's in Legion Prince Thor Theldrin uh, yeah let's read what it says here so he devised a crazy plan and let's see what it says here we can actually use the dungeon journal here to help us so indeed use the dungeon journal it gives you law after the wall of eternity's destruction Prince Thor Theldrin maintained control over the surviving Chandrala by imprisoning a demon in the ruins of Elder Thalas Imolthar here and letting his subject siphon its strength the exposure to demonic powers twisted Thor Theldrin's mind and when the creature faltered the prince ordered the deaths of many of his vassals so only he and his most fanatical followers would be left to enjoy the corrupt energy. Alright. Oh, a rare mob. So that was basically the cliff notes as it were. We're taking quite a bit of damage here to, to the story. So the story goes as such. Thor Theldrin wanted to find a new source of power for his people to, to use magic first. from he summoned Imolthar in secret and started siphoning power of it to ward the city's wards which had been constructed to spare it from the onslaught of the legion and later the sundering and that's why the city is still quite intact um, and all went well for a while until um, Imolthar's power started to, um, like they could still draw from it, but not enough to feed everyone without, you know, their source of power one day running out. And that's when Tolthaldrin basically made the sh decision of, okay, if we are basically getting, uh, becoming more and more to the point that the demon can't sustain us, we need to call some uh, some of our own people so that our numbers are always going to be such that uh, the demon can always feed us for eternity and he then basically did a night elven version of the night of the long knives and purged everyone he didn't deem worthy for those of you who don't know the night of the long knives reference that is basically when the ss in nazi germany killed off all the sa people uh, and their leaders and yeah uh, now Tolferdrin is actually you could um, op he's an optional boss so you don't have to kill him he's quite nice though he does surprisingly high damage 
uh, but he's still the leader of the Chandralar and I'm not sure if you can do this. Technically I believe you should, but I don't think so. Uh, you could become like exalted with these guys, it was also a part of the Insane in the Membrane achievement conditions. And the story is quite amazing indeed, because remember that their original mission was to protect these tomes that Queen Ajara had deemed too valuable or dangerous for other people to just like see. Uh, it turns out that the introduction in like original vanilla WoW to the dungeon was that you had a highborn, highborn not a blood elf but then uh, a high elf sorry not a highborn a high elf so not a blood elf but a um, Queltali elf so high elf that had refused the gift that Kalthas offered to uh, all the other high elves uh, to become a blood elf and later on consume the power of demons. So a high elf come here and decide I want to go and look for these um, uh, these tomes in in Dire Maul or in Elder Thalas and you end up finding her corpse uh, later incinerated uh, and what you what it then does is it kind of opens up this quest of oh the Chandralar will give you favor if you find these tomes for them and make sure that nobody thinks that there are any like riches of elven knowledge in this uh, in this dungeon to be had. And I thought that was quite nifty. But what I think is the most interesting thing about the Chandralar themselves mm -hmm. is that remember that they siphon power from a demon? Oh nice, we managed to level up them. Yet, they are distinctly elven. Like, even now the, the law says that when you create a night elf mage, you are trained by one of the Chandralar, and even, I would say, if you role play it right, you could say you are one of the Chandralar. But, you were never immortal. So the only way you lived this long was because you consumed demonic power, yet the whole thing's going slightly verdant green, just doesn't happen to you like the orcs got their entire skin color changed the high elves had their eye color changed but the chandralar seem quite unaffected by having siphoned the, the demonic power for so long other than having you know become mad like their prince and grown addicted to it but i wonder like blizzard will probably not get into this that much because it's the offshoot of an offshoot of an offshoot in the law and we've kind of like dealt with demons this entire expansion and that chapter of the well law book is sort of closed don't ask me where i'm going i'm just climbing up the twin colossus here so i don't think we will ever get answers to this but i'd like to know what the possibility of the chandral are remaining quite unaffected by having consumed demonic power holds in store for something like Queen Ajara, the Naga, and all the others who have um, not so much consumed demonic power, at least not at such quantities, but in they were all highborn, so could they be immune to the adverse effects of demonic power? And then the caveat would be, well, the high, elven, high elves were not immune because by the time they started consuming demonic power, they had uh, evolved to become such distant cousins of the night elves that something in the mm, genetic makeup had changed something like that. just like random spe speculations and loose ends that I think are interesting in the wow law especially because I love the whole war of the ancients demons night elf type stuff that you you have it also means that as someone who hasn't looked much into the Nightborn, because I haven't been that uh, active this expansion, I like to see if there's some form of um, similar thing going on with the Nightborn, since they they created the Nightwell as well to replace the Well of Eternity, and they have their own own addiction story type going on there. Anyway, we need to apparently seal a portal here. So we need to use Isondra's tier to seal the portal to the Dreambow. Uh, quick newsflash, this is not actually going to stay sealed. 
when you are a druid you can still use this portal to go to Feralas. Oops, Blizzard completely forgot that we did this quest. Anyway, this is not it for the episode, but we will seal this portal and then, then I will call it. So, yeah, we need to seal this portal because apparently the night uh, mayor is bleeding through here and corrupting things. Not that we can really see it. And we need to be careful because it's heavily guarded. None, uh, for instance, by Lethless here. But luckily, we are a rogue. So, all druids who like this person here want to get to Feralas before we seal the portal, please come through now. Or forever be stuck on the other side. I think they should have at least let the shimmering thing here um, fade out for a couple of minutes. If only for us with some form of phasing. Because that, that was just underwhelming. <laughs> we did, did a big green boom of a smoke bomb and then it just like, yeah, portal sail here. Alright. But let's call this an episode then as we run away from the Jade Mia Echo Spawn. I do like the fact that we seem to be having lots and lots of health issues. Well, not lots and lots, but we are constantly like stuck at 70 to 60% health. Uh, but yeah, this is it for the episode. So as always, my name's been SneakyBot. I do really, really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. And if you did, then do give me a like and a subscribe. I will see you in the next episode where we delve deeper into the lore that Feralas has to offer and just do some general chit chat as well. Until then, bye bye.